there it goes. Okay, so for section 2.4, we have exact equations. And the definition of an exact equation is if you can get the DE differential equation into this form, where you have something times dx and something times dy equal to zero. Important that it's equal to zero, okay? Um, if you can get it into that form, then you have one criteria to verify, um, and then it would be considered an exact equation, okay? Um, and it says that this equation is said to be exact if the left side is an exact differential. But what the heck does that mean, right? What is an exact differential? <laughs> does, does that mean on the left, uh, let's say MXY? Uh -huh. This is, side. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a multivariate function? Or? Right. Any kind of function, and it could have X's or Y's in it, right? Or Y's. Uh -huh. And this one, too, could be any kind of function, but X's or Y's. Not that Doesn't one. matter. Or. 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 Either or. Or both. It or could both. have both. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can get it into this form with it equal to zero, and the left side is a differential, an exact differential. But what is does that mean? What does exact differential mean? Exact differential means that the partial derivative of this function with respect to y is the exact same thing that you would get if you took the partial derivative of n with respect to x. Okay? So you kind of like switch, right? Because this one is next to a dx and that one is next to a dy. But when you're doing the partial derivative, you're doing it with respect to y here, and you're doing it with respect to x over here, okay? And the way I remember is the other notation that they showed me in calculus for partial, this is another uh, notation for partial derivatives, like this, okay? And if I did a second derivative, I'd have like myy or myx, depending on what my um, dependent variable was there, okay? So the way I remember which one I'm doing what is this one looks like the word my, right? <laughs> and then the other one's just the other letters, the n and the x, right? So that's how I remember which one to do, okay? So the guidelines are is if you do in fact have an exact equation, you can get it to look like this and you verified that my is the same as nx, then these are the guidelines to solve it. So one, of course, just verify that it's exact, then two, if it is exact, there should exist a family of solutions where you have some function in terms of x and y equal to a constant, okay? They're telling you that that will exist. This will be the solutions to the DE, and it does exist, okay? But how do we find it, right? Well, one thing we know about this particular solution is that if I take the partial derivative of it with respect to x, I'll end up with m. And if I take the partial derivative of it with respect to y, I'll end up with n. Okay? And they're telling me, that's a theorem, I didn't write down the whole theorem, but there is a theorem that says that this is the fact. Okay? If the equation is exact, this f of x of y exists. Okay? And then it's just a matter of us trying to find it. Okay? And we use these properties to find it. Because what happens if I take the integral of a derivative? If I do this, don't I just get f, right? And then if I take the integral of this one, who knows what that'll be? But I could figure it out, couldn't I? And the same thing over here. If I take the integral of this with respect to y, I would figure out what f is. But that would also mean I would have to take the integral of this with respect to y. So there is a way to find that f. So what you end up doing is you end up integrating m with respect to x, and you end up integrating n with respect to y, and then you compare the two. And we'll talk more about that, about why we have to compare the two. And the reason is, is because when you integrate with respect to x, remember, that if you have functions with y's only, their derivatives would just be zeros, wouldn't they? So there may be, when you take this integral, some hidden function of y. And similarly over here, when you take the integral with respect to y, you may have a hidden fun function in terms of x. Because when you take the derivative of it, it would disappear. Okay? 
And that's why you have to compare the two because there may be parts of one that are missing from the other and parts from the other that are missing from the first one. And you have to put it together to give me what F really, really is. Okay. And then you can always verify that you have the correct F because we know this property. Okay. So we'll go into that. First, I want to start off with an easy one because we know the answer just by looking at it. Okay. And then you can verify that this method is working. So for my first example, it has um, 2dx plus 3dy equal to 0. Now, if I were to just go over here on the side and solve for dy dx, right, I would have to move over this term to the right-hand side, so it would become minus 2dx, right? And then I could divide by dx, and I'd end up with this. And then I could divide by three to get the dy dx all by itself, and I'd end up with negative two thirds, right? And just doing your integration with respect to x, what would you end up with? What would y be? If I integrate this with respect to x, Mm-hmm. Negative two-thirds x. And isn't that true if I have a line? Isn't the slope of that line negative two-thirds? Right? And that's what the derivative is. The derivative is negative two-thirds, right? Remember, derivatives are slopes graphically, right? Okay. So this is what we get for our answer over here. If we just do it just by inspection from Cal 1 information, Cal 2 information. So okay? when you have dy over dx, what mm -hmm. would great with respect to x? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, you have to do this. You do the integral of here, dx, the integral of here, dx. And then these cancel, but what's the integral of a derivative of y? Just y. y. Mm -hmm. And normally you have a plus c as well, right? When you do your integration, you have your constant. Okay. That's just normal thing. It's kind of actually separation, separable um, problem as well. You can do it that way as well. But I'm going to do this now using the exact information. So first thing I need to do is identify what is M. Is it in the right form, first of all? Do you have something times dx plus something times dy equal to zero? Yeah. So then what is M? What is the function in front of the dx? It's two. Two. What is in? Three. And if I take the derivative of m with respect to y, what do you end up with? solved anything. All I've done is just verified that it was exact. And derivative of m with respect to y. Mm -hmm. Because it's a dx. It's a derivative of x. So I'm not taking this part though. Not the dx. It's just the, the function in front. The function. Right. Notice when we identified m, yeah, we did not put the yeah, dx. I'm saying we're taking, it, uh, we're taking the partial derivative of m mm -hmm. with respect to y. To y. So that means uh, with respect to y, that means uh, x is going to be constant. Mm -hmm, but I don't have any x's. Right. And constants are also constants, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. X is going to be yes, it will get more complicated. So, so, so uh, okay, x is going to be constant. But you don't so, have any x. Right, I don't have any x. So I'm, you're not worried about that I don't yet. Have any y too, right? right, you don't have any y's over right. here either. So right. it's easy right now. <laughs> this right. is just so the baby so one. <laughs> okay, sure. So just derivative of, uh, derivative of a constant is zero. Right, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into step two to try to find the function. Okay, this is the function I'm trying to find. 
But how the heck do we get that, right? That's what we want to know. Okay. So what we do is we take the integral of m, which was 2, with respect to what? To x. And you're going to take the integral of n with respect to y. So you're basically just putting integral symbols in front of these two terms, aren't you? Right? So I'm doing this. This is what I'm going to do. They're not equivalent. They're not, they're kind of related to each other, but we have to figure that out in a second. So when you take the integral of this with respect to x, what do you end up with? 2x. But you also end up with some function in terms of y. Because if I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to x, what happens to it? It becomes 0. So it could be hidden in there, right? This is kind of like your plus c. But because I know that f can have both x's and y's in it, I have to make sure that I include those functions of y that would just disappear. Then over here, if I take the integral with respect to y, what will I end up with? 3x, or not 3x, 3, 3y, good. 3y plus some function in terms of x. Because what's the derivative of all my x functions when I'm, integrate, when I'm taking the derivative with respect to y? they'd all be zero because they all act like constants, right? It's the wrong variable, okay? So then I've got to compare the two. First, I look to see, does this expression and does that expression have anything in common? These are the only two terms that I know for sure what they are, right? Are they have anything in common? No, right? So then I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be able to say that I have a certain number of terms just, just yet. So just a question. So let's say integral of 2, uh, let's say integral of 2x dy. Mm -hmm. Integral of 2x dy. So 2x will be treated like a constant, will be considered a constant, right? 2x, right? We consider it as a constant if we are integrating yes. integral of 2x dy. Yes. So that could happen. That's yeah. correct, right? It will in a minute. Okay, so, yeah. so, so, it will. Uh, mm -hmm. So integral to x dy we consider to x as a constant. Yes. So it will become it will become uh, two two x dy. Uh huh. Becomes what? So two x is a constant. So there's my constant two. multiplier. What's the integral? Right. You multiply the two x by. Y. Exactly. Okay. But you still have your plus h of x. This is like your big C. Because all functions in terms of x right. are C's when you differentiate with respect to y. All functions in terms of x. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I take the partial derivative of this whole thing with respect to y, I should end up with 2x. Okay. Right? Will I? This is like a constant multiplier, right? And what's the derivative of y with respect to y? What is that? The y is zero. Nope, not zero. <laughs> one. Oh, one. <laughs> but then what would be the derivative of all functions in terms of x with respect to y? The derivative of all functions of, of x with respect to y. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, with respect to y. So I can, I can access constant. Right, all so these would become right. constants, so and what would those would be zero. And then isn't that the same as 2x? Yes, yes. Okay. So you have to remember, whatever answer you end up here, the partial derivative of that with respect to y should be what you were integrating. Okay? Which is why we keep having to add on this h of x. Right, right. Or when you're doing it in terms of dx, you have to add on g of y. Because these guys would go to zero mm -hmm. if I take the partial with respect to x. Okay, so they don't have anything in common here, so I'm not going to start off here with writing what they have in common. However, 
do you have a function solely in terms of y over here? Do you? Do you have any terms over here that are solely in terms of y? Yes. So this g of y, you already know what it is. It's 3y. And similarly, do you know what h of x is? It's the 2x. And so if I put those things together, I have that f of x, y, should be 2x plus 3y. Or vice versa, 3y plus 2x. Same thing, right? Then this number 3 tells me, actually number 2 tells me, that my solutions will look like that function equal to C. So we found f of x, y. Now we just needed to write what the solution is. And it's that function equal to C. That's what number two told us, right? It said there exists a family of solutions and they look like that. Okay, so that's all I did. I found out what f of x, y is, put it here, and then just set it equal to C. Now here's the million dollar question. Are these two the same thing? Right? Are they the same thing? They are. I'm going to scribble it on another sheet of paper, but you'll have it in the video, I guess. It's just not going to be on this sheet of paper. But if I take 2x plus 3y equal to C, and I get y all by itself to make it look like this, I would have to minus the 2x over, and then I would have to divide by 3, wouldn't I? And is constant over 3 still a constant? It is, isn't it? So this can be rewritten as this, which is exactly what we had gotten over here. Okay? And this one we did usually using just Cal2 information or Cal1 information, but if I had also solved this using the separable method, I would have gotten the same exact answer, okay? And so remember what I mentioned about the reviews, right? There's gonna be problems that can be solved more than one way, and it's gonna make you solve them all those different ways. You'll be able to verify if all your answers are equivalent to each other, and so if you're getting the right things, okay? And if you're more confident in one method versus another, you might know, hey, I know this one's right, just let's make sure I get that when I do all the other methods, okay? So always in this case, our solution would be y equals, and the y in terms of x, right? They usually write them like this. Mm -hmm. In this section, they leave them like that. Right, they are just x and y, because mm -hmm. we, have, we have the dx and the dy, so we have to get the x and the y. Right. But, but, but it doesn't have to be uh, like this. I mean, it could be quite a right? they, they, Normally, in this section, they don't make you solve for y. In all the other sections, they've been making us try to get y by itself, right? But in this particular section, they don't make us. So if you look at all the solutions in the back of the book, they probably are not going to have y by themselves. Right. They're just going to be in this form with the f of x, y equal to c. Okay. okay. But like, uh, could, I, could we have, for example, 2x squared plus, for example, another case, mm -hmm. we have like 2x squared plus 3y plus c. You will have all plus. kinds Everything. of things. Everything. Mm -hmm. Trig functions, I mean, all kinds of things. We're going to get to them right now. Okay. <laughs> So yes, we're gonna, this is just a little baby one to kind of get, and I look, I had more paper. I was afraid to go to the next page. <laughs> okay, so this one's example two. So it says same directions as example one. Determine whether it's an exact equation, and if it is, then go ahead and solve it, okay? So in the form that it needs to be in, for me to identify M and N. Yes, it's got something times dx plus something times dy equal to zero. So then what is m? Mm -hmm. And then what is n? 4x minus 8y cubed. You got it. Okay, now I need to verify, right? Is this exact? So do m y. Partial derivative of m with respect to y. That's what that stands for, right? It's the partial derivative of m with respect to y. I'm just using the shorthand notation, okay? I forgot what it, I think it's like the Leibniz, Lebsnitz, I can't say that word. 
It's a guy's name, <laughs> but it's his notation, okay? It's the same guy that tells us we can do F prime, right? That's the same kind of notation. It's just, this is the notation for partials. You can't put a prime because you're not taking it with respect to all variables, just one at a time. Okay, so what is the derivative of 5x with respect to y? Zero. What is the derivative of 4y with respect to y? derivative 4 so here I just get 4 now let's go look over here the derivative of n partial derivative of n with respect to x what is the derivative of 4x with respect to x 4 what is the derivative of this big ugly thing with respect to x zero so it doesn't even matter how weird it looks it's just zero right <laughs> okay so i get four is it exact mm -hmm. it is exact and because it is then i can take the integrals it's kind of like a partial integral right because i have more than just that variable um and then figure out what that function f is so i'm going to take the integral of 5x plus 4y dx this term here and then I'm going to take the integral of this term over here notice I'm not putting the plus sign or the equal zero or anything I'm just doing this this is kind of like my scratch work to figure out what f is okay so I'm going to separate this just because it helps us to figure it out better eventually you're going to get faster at this um, I could have done that in the last step, but I didn't. Okay, let's take out the constants. Here, do I have any constants I can pull to the front? For this term? Just the five, because the X is important, right? What about here? Do I have any constants I could take out? Uh-huh, the wrong variable, right? So it can be treated as a constant. Now over here, do I have any constants that I can take out for x? Because it's the wrong variable. And here I took out the constant, but could I have taken this out too? No, it's important, right? Because I'm doing that derivative, that integral with respect to y. So that part I couldn't have taken out. I had to leave the y cubed inside there. Now, what is the integral of x? Six is squared over two. x squared over 2. What is the integral of dx? Or, if you think of it, an imaginary 1 dx. It's, it's just x. And then again, you could have a constant, right? But remember, all functions in terms of y are considered fun are considered constants here. Because when I take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, all those will go away. Okay. Now we can clean it up a little bit, but not very much, right? So the gx represents all functions in terms of y for both, for the first integral and the second integral. Right, sort. together. Mm -hmm. Okay, over here on the right-hand side, we've got 4x like a constant, and what is the integral of dy? Y. And then my minus 8 times, what is the integral of y cubed? And then, of course, you have your plus c, but that could involve functions in terms of x. So we end up with 4xy minus, I will reduce this, 
2 y to the fourth plus h of x. Now I'm going to identify what is f. So here, again, look first to see if they have anything in common. Do they have anything, any terms that look exactly the same? They do. They have this term, don't they? Don't they have both have a positive 4xy? So that term has to be part of f of x. Then you got to kind of cross, right? Do you see over here what h of x would be? Functions that solely have x. Mm -hmm. This would have to be the h of x, right? Well, because they are equal to each other. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to have plus 5 over 2x squared. And then do you see over here on this side, what could possibly have been g of y? Mm -hmm. This thing here would have been the g of y. So minus 2y to the fourth. So then my solutions are going to be 4xy plus 5 halves x squared minus 2y to the fourth equal to c. Now I'm going to verify this in a minute. But remember, the partial derivative of this with respect to x should be m. The partial derivative of this with respect to y should be n. Okay, and that would be how you check your answer. Okay, so let's see real quick. Okay. What is the partial derivative of f with respect to x? So what is the derivative of this term with respect to x? Mm hmm, because the four and the y would act like constants and the derivative of x is just one. So you would end up with four y there. Then what would be the derivative of this term with respect to x? Mm -hmm, because you'd bring down the 2, which will cancel with that 2, right? And then you decrease the power by 1. So you end up with 5x. And then what would be the derivative of this term with respect to x? It'd be like a constant, 0. Is that what we have for m? It is. So this is just checking to make sure we had the correct f. Now what about the partial derivative of f with respect to y? What would be the derivative of this term with respect to y? Mm -hmm. That would act like the constant, and this derivative would just be 1. So 4x. What would the, be the derivative of this term? Yes, because it's just x's, right? So this is like a big fat constant. So it would be 0. And then what about the derivative of this term with respect to y? You bring down the 4, which would make it an 8, and then decrease the power by 1, and you get that. Is that equivalent to n? It is. n just doesn't have a 0 in there, right? Okay, so it's just the way you can kind of check to make sure you found the right answer. Okay, so that's nice about this one. You can... Most of these, you can't check them. But of course, they get more complicated. So, right? so you have a dx. <coughs> that means we're Let's gonna do. Find, we're going to find the partial derivative with respect to x. Mm -hmm. have a dx. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, it was great, this example. I'm still everything. Good. They're going to get harder. <laughs> you can always do, right? We've got to build. OK. So I think I have three more, and then we will have gotten to the level of difficulty, you'll, the maximum level of difficulty you'll see in your homework. We have six examples, so we still have a few more to go. Okay, so next one says, 
same directions as example one. Make sure it's exact, and then if it is, do the integrals and find f of x, right? So this one's going to be, hmm, do I have this one in the right form? It is not. I have something times dy over dx, and then I don't have something times dx over here. Can I fix it? How would I make this so it's just dy by itself? Multiply by dx, yes. Subtract, no, because I have to have zero over here, right? So yes, we can multiply by dx on this term. We can multiply by dx on this term. And if I multiply by dx on that term, doesn't it still stay a zero? So it'll still fit our definition. Um, let me grab the, I'm gonna change it to purple now. So the dx's will cancel and I'll just have dy. And over here, I'll have all of this stuff times dx, but it'll still equal zero. Try to squish it in there. Okay, so we have to verify whether or not it's exact. So what is m in this case? It's all the junk in front of dy, right? Oh, no, aren't my terms backwards, right? It's supposed to be m times dx plus n times dy equal to zero. So I mean, you could rewrite the whole thing the other way around, but I don't have to. What's m? Uh-huh, it's the y over x squared part, that factor, okay? So m is what's in front of dx, so it's this. And then n is what's in front of dy, which is this factor. Okay, so we had to multiply by dx to try to get it into the right form, but our two terms were the other way around. But that's okay as long as you can recognize which one is m and which one is n. m is the one tagged next to the dx, and n is the one that's multiplied by the dy. Okay, now we have to do the partials to verify whether or not it's exact. And I'm guessing the amount of room I gave myself that these are not exact because otherwise <laughs> I'm not going to have enough room to do the actual integrals and everything, right? So let's see. We'll do this derivative with respect to y. So the 1 over x squared is like a constant. And what's the derivative of y? Just 1. Then for this term, the whole thing is like a constant. What is the derivative of it? Just 0. And over here... 3 sine of 3x is like a constant. And what's the derivative of the y there? 1. So we end up with 1 over x squared plus 3 sine 3x. That's what we get for the partial derivative. Over here, we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x. So what is the partial derivative of this with respect to x? zero because it's like a big constant what about the derivative of that with respect to x it's actually negative one over x squared why is it negative one over x squared right uh-huh i did a power rule because that can be written as x to the negative one right and when you're taking the derivative of that this stays here you bring down your exponent, and then you decrease it by 1, which means it becomes negative 2. And so this is exactly what I wrote there. Okay? That's just a common one, so you have it memorized. That's why I knew what it was right away.
okay? And then what is the derivative of cosine three x? This one has chain rule. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. But then what is the derivative of the angle? The derivative of three x? Three. So if I clean that one up, I end up with a positive one over x squared and a negative three sine of three x. We almost had it, right? <laughs> almost. The first term is exactly the same and the second term almost looks the same, but what's wrong? Mm -hmm. One of them is positive, right? And the other one is negative, which means are they exactly the same? No. So this DE is not exact. Which means I cannot solve it using the exact method. It may be possible to solve it using some other method, but that's not what we're doing in this section, right? We're just doing the exact method. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You could have solved it using the linear. They make these things because the mathematics is important. It's important, it's important mm -hmm. to uh, to save time. I mean, mm -hmm. not like solving, 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 but not sure each answer. That's why they make all this categorization. You know? Right. Exactly. So this equation is not exact. Could it be solved on like separable equations? For example, we're gonna see, right? Separable, no. See separable, no, because you have functions in terms of x next to dy and right. functions in terms yeah. of y with dx. Right. Linear. If I divide that over here, I could. Nope, because then you'd have well, no. Because then you'd have a function of y over a function of y, which you can't have y's and y's when you're doing the linear. Yeah, the most important thing is to follow the form, right? Mm -hmm. so. Okay, let's try number four. Number four still looks ugly, but it may be solvable. <laughs> Looking by the amount of space, it probably is. Okay, so is this one ready for me to identify m and n? Not exactly. Why? Correct. It needs to be equal to zero. And currently it is not. So we can just subtract that whole entire term that's on the right over to the left. So it'll become negative. Bless you. Like this. Right? But it's still not quite the way it's supposed to be can't have a minus there. So I'm going to do a little thing to get rid of that minus, right? I'm going to change it to a plus sign, but then that negative is going to have to get distributed. Oh, there's only two terms. So no third arrow there. So that means inside the parentheses, I'll have negative 3xy squared and negative 2y cosine x. Now I can identify the M and the N, okay? So M is going to be the X minus Y cubed plus Y squared sine X. N is going to be the negative 3X Y squared minus 2Y cosine X. So we have to verify if it's exact first. So MY, what's the derivative of X? with respect to y. Mm -hmm, zero. I'm not going to write it. What is the derivative of negative y cubed with respect to y? Negative 3y squared. 
This one's a little weird. What is the derivative of y squared sine x? It's 2y. 2y sine x. 2y sine sin x. You got it. The sine x is just like a constant. It's just on the right-hand side. Okay, now let's do the other term. What is the derivative of negative 3xy squared with respect to x? Uh huh, because the derivative of negative 3x is just negative 3, right? And this is just like a constant multiplier. So it's just there. Yeah, beautiful, these partial derivatives. <laughs> 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 they look crazy, but it looks like they're going to work. <laughs> and what about the derivative of negative 2y cosine x? Remember, you're doing it with derivative with respect to x. So this is like a constant, right? What's the derivative of cosine x? Negative sine. Negative sine. So that's going to end up changing this. So it's going to end up becoming positive 2y and then your sine x. And are those the same? They are. So these are exact. Which is why I left so much room. Because we're going to have to solve it, right? <laughs> if she needs me, she's going to... She's going to have to wait. I'm not going to be out of here for another hour. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and do our integrals then. So the integral of m... with respect to x and then the integral of n with respect to y. Okay, so we gotta keep getting our partial minds on, right? Because it gets weird with all the variables. So, x's are the good ones, y's are just like constants, okay? So what is the integral of x? x squared almost over two. over two. Good. Then what is the integral of this? Negative y cubed. Almost times x. And then what's the integral of this term? almost <laughs> negative cosine x because remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine right so you have to have that negative so the negative and the negative will make the positive sign and then we also might have some function solely in terms of y that would just go zero right that's like our big fat constant i thought when sine goes to cosine Yes, it I get positive, They're very that easy to get When you're taking the derivative of sine, yes. Oops, wrong. Then it stays cosine. But what you're doing is you're taking the integral of sine. Okay, and that's negative cosine. Because when I take the derivative of this, it's going to be negative sine, right? And then with that, it takes it to positive. Okay, let's move to the other side. What is the integral of this with respect to y? This is like a constant. All you're integrating is y squared. Minus 3x, y cubed over 3. Minus x, y Yes. Yeah, minus 3x, y cubed over. Uh-huh. And instead of writing 3 and 3 down here, oh, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. I'm just going to write minus x, y cubed. That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on to the next term. Am I messing around with cosine? 
No, it's got an X in there. So it's just going to stay cosine. So it would just be y, y squared. Yes. Because the two would cancel, right? Exactly. And then, of course, you could have a function, your constant, right? Or something in terms of just X's. So great, we did the hard part. Now it's just the compare and then finalize your answer. So what will f of x, y look like? Do you have any terms that have x's and y's that are exactly the same? We have two of them, don't we? We have these terms. They're a little bit backwards, right? But they are equivalent to each other. They are both negative x, y cubed. Both of them. And what about these two terms? Well, those look exactly the same, don't they? So minus y squared cosine x. And then do you have any functions that are solely in terms of x? I like to cross these out so that I visually am not looking at them anymore. This is this, isn't it? So I'm going to write that term down. And now these are gone. Do you have any functions that are solely in terms of y? No. Just g of y. But I don't know what it is, do I? So you don't have to worry about it. It may be, it doesn't have, there's not one. Okay. We're going to verify in a second, right, to make sure we have the right answer. So your solutions are going to be of this form. Equal to c. Okay, so those are the answers to that DE. But let's just verify real quick that we actually have the correct answer. How do we do that? The partial derivative of this with respect to X should be that. And the partial derivative of it with respect to Y should be that. Let's verify. What is the derivative of this term with respect to, um, actually it's the other way around, Y. Am I right? Yeah, no, derivative with respect to x. What is the derivative of this term with respect to x? I'm going to write it down here. This thing is going to act like a constant, right? And what's the derivative of x? So What is the derivative of x? It's 1. 1. Okay. This is going to act like a constant. What's the derivative of cosine x? Negative sine x. So it's going to turn it to positive and then sine x. And what is the derivative of this term? It is because the 2 will come down and then I'll take away 1, right? And the 2's will cancel, leaving me with just x to the 1. Is this equivalent to this? It is. It's just the terms are not in the same order, right? You have x. It's right here. You have negative y cubed. It's right there. And you have positive y squared sine x. It's right there. Okay? Now let's go verify that the partial of f with respect to y is correct. So this this is the constant now. What's the derivative of y cubed? 3y squared. So I'm going to make some room and put the 3 in the front. y squared. What's the derivative of this term? That means this time cosine is considered the constant. And what's the derivative of y squared? 2y. And what would be the derivative of this? It's just the whole thing is a constant. So it would be 0. And does that match what n is? They're exactly the same, right? So we're just checking our answer to make sure that we're good. Our function is correct. But when you look in the back of the book, it's not just going to have the function. It's always going to have the solutions as the function equal to c. Okay? You explain things in a great way. 
I try to because it has to make sense to me <laughs> before I'm going to go try to explain to somebody else. Sure. This one? These are supposed to look exactly like? No. These have to be the same. And then you're supposed to look for your function solely in terms of x, and then your function solely in terms of y. Now we did have a function solely in terms of x. So this is the h of x from over here. And that's why I wrote it here. However, we didn't have a function solely in terms of y that would con be considered the g of y. So we just don't have that term. Right. Some question. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, why we are putting that the f of x y equals c? It's it's. Uh, That's the theorem. But it has variables. How is that be equal to? It should be all the variables varying. You could solve this for y, and then it'll have functions with constant with c's in them. Remember how when we were solving the problems using separations of variables, and we would get y by itself. There would be C's in the function as well. Okay. And so if I try to solve this for Y, that C is going to be involved in that um, function at the end. So it could be like C e to the something, C over X. Yeah. It could be all you kinds mean of things. You mean solve this for Y? You mean that we write as Y equals something? Correct. Uh, yeah. This one may not exactly. be possible, but usually right. we try to do that. Yeah, the C is exactly because if we move the C to the... The other side of the equation could be positive and negative C. So. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just like looked, looks a little weird. Funny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because usually variables, like functions, will equal to constant because they, they always can can have uh, an input and it gives an output. Mm -hmm. Which is why the C is, is not given. It could be anything. Oh, right. Yes. So once you know what X is and once you know what Y exactly. is, you'll know what C right, is. But there's no specific C. Right. Okay. Okay, so now let's see example five. Again, very similar, except we haven't seen anything with exponentials yet, right? We've seen the regular algebraic expressions. We've seen the trigonomic expressions. Now we're getting into some exponentials, okay? But we're gonna do it the same exact steps. So do we have it in the right form to identify M and N? It is. We've got something dx plus something dy equal to zero. So what is m? I think I started solving it. It looks like I erased a bunch of stuff. I have to remember I'm doing notes and not just solving problems. <laughs> so I'll start and then I'll erase. So here we have three x squared y plus e to the y. Here we have x cubed plus x e to the y minus 2y. And so we have to make sure it's exact. I'm guessing by the amount of paper I left myself that it is, but you have to make sure. Because if it's not, you stop right there on the test, right? You wouldn't need to keep going with it. You would just say, nope, not exact. I don't need to do that. Okay, so m, y derivative of this with respect to y. That means this acts like a constant and what is the derivative of y? Is one. one. This has a y in it. What is the derivative of e to the y? Z to the y. E to the y. And then normally you do the chain rule but what's the derivative of y? One. Just one. So it's not really going to do anything. So we have 3x squared plus e to the y. Now let's take the partial with respect to x. What's the derivative of th x cubed? 3x squared, yep. Then the e to the y part is like my constant, but what's the derivative of x? Just 1. And then what's the derivative of negative 2y with respect to x? 
zero. That's like a big fat constant and its derivative is zero. So we end up with three x squared plus e to the y. Are they the same? Yes, so this one is exact, which means I do have to do the partial integrals, compare and find f, right? So we'll do this setup. And we'll do this setup. And then we'll start going at it, right? So what is the integral of this term with respect to x? So remember, this is considered a constant. Actually, the 3 also, right? So what is the integral just of x squared? x cubed over 3. So if I simplify, that term is just y x cubed, isn't it? Then we move on over here. This has y's in it, which means it's just a big constant. What's the integral of dx or the integral of 1? x. So we end up with x e to the y. And then again, it's like a partial integral, right? We could have some function in terms of y's that would all go to 0 when you take the derivative, right? Then over here, we're doing integration with respect to y. So this guy acts like a constant, and what's the integral of the invisible one? y. This guy acts like a constant, and what's the integral of e to the y? e to the y. And then this acts like a constant, but what's the integral of y? y squared over 2. So if I clean that one up, oh, and I forgot the rest of it, but I'll write it down in a second. 2's will cancel. I have minus y squared, but I could also have some function solely in terms of x's, right? Those are like the plus c's of integration. If there were no x's in this entire problem, I probably would just be putting plus c. But the fact that I have x's means it could be a function solely of x's. Okay, do we have any terms completely the same? You've got this one and you've got that one, right? They're exactly the same. x cubed y. And you've also got this one here and that one there. They're also exactly the same. Do you have an h of x over here? You don't. There is no function solely in terms of x's over here. So we don't have that one. Do you have a function solely in terms of y over here? You do. It's this guy, right? So that's the same as the gy. So minus y squared. So you don't have an h of x. You do, but it's zero, right? <laughs> and you don't usually write down zero, do you? Okay? So you just leave it alone. Just so drop it off. Okay? Now our solutions are going to be x cubed y plus x e to the y minus y squared equal to c. So that's our answer, but just because we want to check, we'll check. So we want to see if m equals this, and we want to see if n equals 
this, right? What is the derivative of this with respect to x? This is a constant, and what's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. Here, this is a constant, and what's the derivative of x? 1. And this is a constant, but what's the derivative of a constant? 0. So we get 3x squared y plus e to the y. Is that equivalent to m? It is, right? Now let's go look at the other one. So now y is my variable, which means x cubed is a constant. What's the derivative of y? one. Again, x is my variable. I'm sorry. <laughs> x is my constant here. The y's are my variable. So what's the derivative of e to the y? e to the y. And then here, only constant I have is maybe the negative one in front, but what's the derivative of y squared? 2y. And if I clean that up, I get x cubed plus x e to the y minus 2y. Is that the same as n from the very beginning? It is. So it's just checking our answer to make sure we have the right answer. Okay. Okay. The last thing, it's not a crazy one. It doesn't have trigs or exponentials or anything like that. Um, it's not going to be too complicated to work on. But what's different about example six? Mm -hmm, this, right? It's called an, an initial condition. So, so these... Oh, no, we don't want to put CS. Mm-hmm. So this one you will be able to find C, and you have to, right? So once you figure out what the solutions look like, you can't stop there. You have to give me the one and only solution, okay? Not the general solution. So we do this exactly the same. Is it ready for me to identify M and N? Again. Initial value problem, and this is the initial value. Mm -hmm. So m is going to be x plus y squared. n is going to be 2xy plus x squared minus 1. I do not like to leave this like this, so I actually square it. You get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Remember what a square means. It means that thing times itself, right? So you have an x plus y times another x plus y, and if you foil it out or distribute it out, that's where this middle term comes from. Okay. You cannot, should not, and please don't, ever just square the x and square the y. You can't do that when there's a plus or a minus in the middle. Okay, so if I take the partial with respect to y, this guy will act like a constant. What's the derivative of that constant? Just zero. Here, again, partial derivative with respect to y, which means this will act like a constant, but what's the derivative of y? 1. And then that is all y's, right? No, con no uh, constant multiplier. What's the derivative of y squared? 2y. So we end up with 2x plus 2y. Let's see if that's what we get on the other side. So now we're going to do the partial with respect to x. So that means the 2 and the y are the multiplier. What's the derivative of x? 1. 
what's the derivative of x squared? 2x, and what's the derivative of negative 1? 0. So I write 2y plus 2x. Are those the same? Yeah, you get positive 2y and positive 2x, right? So this is exact, which means we can keep going, of course, right? So let's see, we're going to integrate, and I'm not going to use this version of m, the original version of m. I'm going to use the expanded version of m so that I can integrate each term, okay? So I'm going to say x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then we're going to integrate this function with dy. So here, what's the integral of x squared? x to the what? The hardest thing, there's like two hard things. <laughs> One is like making sure you're focused on the correct variable, right? But then also making sure that you're focused on whether you're doing derivatives or integrals because it's real easy to get them backwards. <laughs> and that has happened on tests before in the past. Like you're taking the integral, but someone does a derivative instead. So be very careful. Two things to keep your brain straight. Variables, focus on the correct variable, and then focus on whether or not you're integrating or you're derivative differentiating okay so the integral of this one is where you add the exponent right so be x cubed over 3 then the 2 and the y act like the constant multiplier and the integral of x would be x squared over 2 and then here the y squared would be the constant multiplier but the integral of 1 dx is just x and then again, you should have your plus C, but in this case, it could be any kind of function in terms of Y. Now on the right hand side, we're focusing on Y and still integration, right? So this is my constant multiplier and the integral of Y is Y squared over two. This is my constant multiplier and the integral of one is Y. This is my constant multiplier, but the integral of 1 is y. And again, you could have a, a constant function in terms of just x's. I had to squish it in there, sorry. Mm, plus. Okay. So I'm going to clean this up. I get x cubed over 3 plus y x squared plus y squared x plus g of y. Over here, 2's cancel, x y squared plus x squared y minus y plus h of x. So do they have anything in common? I think they have two things, right? They have y x squared and x squared y. Aren't those the same? Right? And then they have um, y squared x and xy squared. Those are also the same. Now, this time it kind of looks like we have both h and g. Right? See here, we have a function solely in terms of x, right? So this is the h. This guy here is the h. x cubed over 3. And we have this minus y over here, so that's the g. Okay, so minus y. Nobody was missing this time. They were both there. And I'm not going to check it this time. We know the solutions only because I'm not done, right? <laughs> we still have to figure out what that c is. Oops, plus x cubed over 3 minus y equal to c. So that's like what the general solution looks like, but we need to find the specific solution. So what am I going to plug in for x? Which one of these is the x? The one on the left or the one on the right? That one's the x. The one on the right is the y. It's okay here because they're the same, right? So even if you had it backwards, you'd still get the right answer. But <laughs> on the test, if they're different, you want to make sure you know which one's which, right? 
So let's plug in one for X and one for Y. One for X and one for Y. One for X and one for Y. So we end up with one plus one plus one third minus one equal to C. Well, these are gonna cancel. What's one plus one third? Four thirds? So C is four thirds. Which means I know what my specific solution is. It's the same function, but now instead of C, I know exactly what that value is. And then we have our 2.4 homework down there. Now I'm going to stop this video because I want to start a whole other video for the 2.5. And we're not going to finish 2.5, but we'll go through it as much as we can. And then whatever I don't get to finish, I'll record on my own. Okay, and I'll post them. They'll be separate. Okay.